Welcome back to North London's Most Red. We're into the semi-finals. We're covering England instead of Arsenal because there's nothing going on with Arsenal at the moment in the summer. Big 4-0 win to show Jeez. ambition to get into the last four. We're favourites. Let's have it. Let's have it, man. That was a good good night for us tonight. It was a good day, man. Like, I mean, it would have been capped off by, I think, Czech Republic beating Denmark because I think that they're just a bit easier. But we're in a good position Two tournaments, two semi-finals. Yep. We have the potential to go further. I will draw up some unfortunate similarities between the semi-finals of both tournaments, though. We can get into that quickly mm-hmm. before we get into the game. So, you know, we beat... Uh, I would say that Colombia are more difficult than Ukraine to get into the yeah the quarters. We then beat mm-hmm. Sweden. Oh, wait, it's the other way around, isn't it? Um, Colombia are easier than Germany. Yeah. And then Sweden and Ukraine. Well, I would say massively by much, though, on the Germans' recent form. I think that you don't give the Germans enough credit still for who they are and what they do. And no, 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 historically get. for sure. But I just mean that they, they aren't the powerhouse they were like when they were winning the World Cup like seven years ago. That's what they I'm saying. A, yeah, they got a 4-2 win against Portugal. Don't forget that. Anyways, the anyways, point is, the quarters, we had Ukraine. Last time we had Sweden. Considering that Ukraine actually beat Sweden in the round before this is quite... Mm-hmm. I mean, we'll give them about similar, right? So we we, we came through yep. both of those games relatively com- comfortable. And then we came up against Croatia. And I remember checking the, like what the odds were, what people thought. And we were slight to moderate favourites against Croatia in that semi-final. And we didn't bring it home in the end. But we were considered the more likely to win. We're now more considered... Well, we're more heavily favourited against Denmark for this game than we were for Croatia yep. then. But I would say that this falls into a similar realm of game. Of 100%. where Croatia and Denmark are good teams, but they're not quite considered major teams. They're on the edge of that. And this is one of those interesting situations where England are just enough better than them overall that you can verge into complacency. And it's a possibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, that, I, I completely agree. It's with that. almost think... like if you came up against the Netherlands or Belgium or something, you could really motivate yourself because you know this is going to have to be one that you fight for tooth and nail. But because yep. you think you're a little bit consistently better than a team like Denmark, who have still got a good bunch of Premier League level players in the team, above that in some cases, Ericsson is obviously a star player, but he can't be playing in this game, that yep. you can think, oh, I've got this. And you might, be ha- like, you might have the tendency to switch off slightly. Or not you, do the right thing in one, you know. Whereas you have to be on guard at all times when you're facing Italy or someone. It might. You hope that the players are all self motivated and, you know, mature and focused enough to get this done. But it is definitely a more difficult game than I think people give it credit for. And Denmark are motivated. They want to win this. They've also won the tournament before. It was almost thirty years ago, but it still happened. I don't think that people should say anything like we're in the final yet. No, definitely not. I mean, I mean, just go back to the start of this tournament when we played Scotland. Like, Scotland should have beaten us. Like, let's not get that twisted. Scotland are probably out of the, all the teams we played so far. Probably the, on paper, probably the worst team. But they gave us the hardest game out of any team in this tournament. Do you know what I mean? If if you just said to people before the tournament, out of all the teams we played, who would give us the hardest time? You'd have said Germany, or you'd have said. You know, the Czechs would give us a harder game. We just said, tonight, Ukraine might have given us a harder game. You wouldn't have said Scotland. So, Denmark can definitely do a number on us. We just have to turn up like we did tonight. So, we get we gave Ukraine no, no like, chance of being better than us or, or grinding our game down or anything. We gave them no positivity. We scored an early goal, which helped massively. Yeah, it and then did really since help. Then it was, because it's one of them games like with Ukraine, because they want to be solid and compact. The longer and longer it takes to score, the more the high, highest likelihood they're going to win, you know? Because you get you frustrated. Yeah. And, and then you yeah. make mistakes. I mean, well, we made which a few is why in the game. They had nothing really to counter because their game plan was don't concede yeah. early. And then Apart we scored in the fourth minute. Walker and Pickford did some fucking crazy, stupid shit. Um, they didn't really create anything, you know? Yeah. It's true. It's so true. We had it. We had it one after that goal. It's like, all right, we can call. We they have to play in the way that they're not comfortable with, and we can play in the way that we are comfortable with now. Yeah, and like today, you can see as well, like set pieces. We're not to be fucked with either. <laughs> we're so good at set pieces. I do man. think this. This is you know. I don't want to look too far ahead, but like, say if we get through Denmark and we play Italy or Spain in the final, that's what it'll be. If we come up against Spain in the final, we can fuck yeah. them up. With Italy set have got really good defenders that good know the yeah. ropes, right? They've been around yeah. for 
65 years and but they're still going Spain. strong. But we can For bully sure. Spain. Laporte is getting bullied by Maguire in there. Yeah, but I'm just um, in typically Spanish teams are, are quite small as well. And what we've, you know, we've got Maguire, we've you know, got fucking Kane, yeah. we've got Henderson. But Luke Chinch, Chiellini will have your fucking head yeah, on a plate, exactly. but it's not the so same when you're against Pau so Torres. Our, our game our game is probably less suited to a team like Italy because I saw Italy play against Belgium the other night and Italy are very good, let's not get that mistaken. Uh-huh. Like that's going to be a proper, proper intense game if we do play Italy. But I mean, regardless of who we get, we've got to get through with Denmark first. And Denmark exactly. Shown let's on just their focus day, on them. On their day, they can fuck anyone up. And... You know, they haven't got Christian Eriksen, but I almost feel like they, in a weird way, they've kind of been lifted by what's happened and they're almost playing better than they would have been if the the tragedy that happened to him didn't happen, if that makes sense. Yeah, they, I feel like they're given them another gear. Nine sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, know, I know it sounds weird because it's a weird thing to, if anything, you'd expect the players to play worse. Do you know what I mean? So no, it's, they, it's, you'd expect them to be 100% motivated, but there is another gear that you don't have access to you unless you're under something... Yeah. Uh, that you can't, that you can't yeah. access through normality. Yeah, and they're and then, fueled by that. But then you, you know you've got to, you've got to say with Denmark as well, like they haven't come up against outrageously hard teams. The only hard team they place uh, they faced so far was Belgium, and they lost that game. Yeah, so, they lost to Belgium. Belgium lost to Portugal. Portugal lost to Italy, and we're gonna fucking beat Italy, so we can beat Denmark. <laughs> I hope so. I don't want to get too confident, but to, you know, Denmark lost to Finland as well. I know that was the game. Of, it was the trauma game. So but was, yeah, I, you can't really read too much into that, and they they should have actually won that game because they dominated that game. They just didn't finish finish their goals. But I mean, they've lost twice in this tournament already. We haven't conceded a goal in five games. That's like, mad. That's actually a omens, good stat. The omens are in our favor. Like I said to you before the game. Um, the only thing that's fucked me off about tonight is Grealish, Grealish not playing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm willing to, you know, I had, had some stuff to say at Sterling at the start, start of the tournament. He's proved me wrong. Uh, Kane had a tragic first first three games, but now that he's got his goal against Germany, he seemed to have turned Mate, it on. if that volley had gone in, it would yeah, have been so was mad. mad. And it was his weak foot as well. That's, that's it was so, a strike, bro. It was I mean, a strike. There's a lot to say where a lot, even players in this tournament have have transformed themselves from how they were playing at the beginning of the tournament. But like they're lucky that like Kane's lucky that Sterling did the business in the group stage. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Kane's only shining now because Sterling made it possible for him. So we need to remember that because but if I Sterling think... wasn't in the team, we wouldn't have fucking got through the group. You know I know think I mean? that's just the general form, how form goes though. Saka yeah. sorted us out at the beginning of the season because he was the only one dragging us through games. He dropped off later on in the season and players like Laka played really well. Emil Smith-Rowe hit another yeah. gear. And I think that's just how form is where you're so good at some points because you're playing for whatever reason, you know, form yeah. dips and dives and escalates and goes up and down. And that's just when you're at your best, if you're a world-class player, you will be carrying your team and and like odds are some of your players will have bad games and some of you will have good games and that's just how it is and you have to be grateful when people are playing well but it's not like um i don't feel like it's as cut as dry as oh he's lucky now because he got yeah. that it's more of a case of like that for whatever reason he has hit his purple patch there and now mm-hmm. he can hit his now yeah and denmark I, I did you watch the czech game today yeah i didn't watch it myself so you you can how, how did you how did you see Denmark? Were they did they play well against the Czech or was it quite even or what? Um, I didn't watch it myself. I thought they played well in the first half, and they were tuning yeah. up at the end of the first half. It was a great finish by Schick. Schick is actually a top player. I looked he up is, his yeah, stats, yeah. and they're actually pretty poor. Like he doesn't score a lot of goals, and he doesn't really. Like, Some players are like that though for their country. Aren't yeah, they? Like, they just turn uh, on like Yarmolenko's yeah, got over forty goals for Ukraine. I'm like, yeah. what? You didn't even score forty goals. To be fair, he's that. been uh, he's been injured a lot. He's been injured a lot. Yeah, I know, but some players just perform for their country. Like I think if do... you're your country's best player, there's some sort of extra emotional whatever that's put on your shoulders that you're like, you have to be this like world-class god. Yeah. And so that some of it somehow rubs off because I think so much of it is mental. And yeah, if you so are he... the player to carry the flag and the mantle, you just find a way to do it that you don't necessarily, if you're playing a bit part in a team in the Premier League or whatever. It's weird though, because so with a lot of these, and, and not not stereotypically with the, like, the bigger nations, but with like the... You know the medium kind of size nations, like in terms of football and ability. Normally, it's like a, a good player that's okay at club level will just be insane at international level, and there's no like real justification for it. And they can never really reproduce it. Shakiri, like it's a bit of a weird one. But one thing Shaka. I want to say, about, yeah, pretty much. Uh, one thing I want to say, like tonight about tonight's game, which I, which has impressed me a lot more than it has in the, the four previous England performances. I think we've had four games before this, haven't we? This is our fifth today, I think. Yeah. So when we went one 0 up. I mean, it happened a little bit in the first half, but we kept 
attacking and we kept actually being positive. I don't know if that's to say that like Ukraine are just quite a level below and we've got to gear up and that you know they're not as good a team as us so it's, it transpired that way but in a lot of our games where we've gone one or up like we've sat back and we just try to defend the lead see or i feel like we really... sat back a bit towards the middle and end of the first half yeah that's what i mean but it when we got that second gear it, it it changed but then maybe you can say that apart from in the um the game against the czechs we hadn't scored an early goal in the tournament because like with the Germany got a, a later goal in Croatia we got a second half goal. Do you know what I mean? So it's when you get a goal in the second half and you go one 0 up and it's quite late in the game, you kind of your natural tendency is to just defend that one yeah. goal lead because it's stupid not to. Because if you go to attack it and then you get caught on the counter and it's a draw. Whereas if you can defend and the defense we've got at this tournament's been unreal. Um, apart from you know we've made a few mistakes, but to go five games with a clean sheet shows that we we do have a solid um, defense. And that's things that have always cost us out of previous tournaments. I can remember the um, when Roy Hudson was in charge. I think it was the World Cup. I can't remember. But when we played like it's uh, Uruguay and we went out to them, or they they beat us and like it, our defense was shit. And like there's so many times against Iceland, we conceded like two or three goals. Like we just we were just terrible defensively. I think that's one thing that you know I haven't been Southgate's biggest fan, but he has sorted out the defense first. And although it's not the best style of play most of the time, he has made us solid defensively and at set pieces. So, I mean, you've got to give credit for that. Yeah, we're killers of set pieces. We're the best set piece people in the world, I'd say. The best team. I mean, whoever... And le- 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 the centre-backs, right, are Stones and Maguire. Stones, for a while, was a shadow of what we thought he would be when he was young, coming yeah. up at Everton and, I guess, the beginning of his Man City career. Completely changed the way he's performed over the last season made yeah, himself sure. a man city legend obviously that was uh augmented legend, by yeah, though, but... by ruben nevers uh sorry ruben diaz who came in and was just fucking mental but full credit to stones completely changed it around i think mentally he's much stronger i think he was prone to like loss of focus and he did show like at the nation's league game that he was a bit dodgy still when we lost to the netherlands in that semi-final that's a couple of years ago now but he's so much more solid Another one who was not written off, but had some, like sort of controversies of the same, you know, style was Maguire with the stuff in Greece and yeah. whatever happened with that, and just generally being a controversial player, completely killing it at the Euros again. Had some fantastic games. wasn't supposed to be fully fit, but he's proven that when people go, oh, well, you bring injured players and this and that, mm-hmm. you know, Southgate doesn't know what he's doing. Actually, he's brought Henderson, who's played well enough and Maguire who's been outstanding so the defence is solid and I give a lot of credit to Southgate but I also give a lot of credit to to Stones for reinventing himself and I guess Maguire for overcoming what must have been traumatic as well we yeah. don't know the full story if he was in the wrong or not but nevertheless he's playing good football I've got to be honest as well like our defence has has been really solid but against and Pickford gives Pickford some credit as well. He had a bit of a dodgy game today, but until oh, yeah, a few dodgy, where was a bit fucking but, yeah, and until that, he's been fucking solid this whole yeah, yeah. tournament, mate. England, we, Pickford is different to before, Everton. Like, yeah, we have had Joe Hart, David James, David, even David Seaman, Arsenal legend. He's made mistakes. You know, Ronaldinho threw a kick at the World Cup. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's there's times where England keepers switch off big time, and like it didn't cost him today. And and fortunately, I think we were free. Three or four no up by the time he did the stupid fucking running out of goal and sliced the ball and nearly they nearly scored from it if they could shoot. Um, so you know, give credit where credit's due. But I do feel like the one the one weakness this, this defense might have is a really fluid attack. Um, we saw at times against Germany um, when they they got clean through, they should have scored a couple of times. I think Werner and Müller should have scored two goals against us definitely when they were clean through they obviously didn't finish it and that's good for us but i mean against italy and spain if we if we get to them in the final and even denmark themselves are quite a fluid attack um we've got to watch it because stones can defensively lack a bit of concentration and maguire can be skinned quite easily so we've got to be careful against them hopefully the next two games because we'll get through denmark but we need to be alert defensively and just just because we haven't conceded a goal in five games it doesn't mean that our defense is absolutely insane and that we're not going to have problems because i feel like in the next two games we are definitely going to concede in both games um but hopefully you know we outscore them and we go through so we've got denmark 
We know yeah. they've got a top quality keeper in Casper Schmeichel. They've yeah, got exactly some good yeah. defenders in like, you know, I thought that Joachim Anderson was one of the standout players for Fulham. They were relegated, but he was their best player. He doesn't even start for them at centre-back. They've got Kia yeah. and Christensen who play. Um, I was really impressed with Marlon Mela, however you pronounce him, uh, a full-back. Mm-hmm. They've got a pretty solid midfield, in all fairness, with Hoiberg and Delaney, are both top quality players that would probably yeah, get near yeah. the England squad. Mm-hmm. Um, Braithwaite's a good player for Denmark. I won't have anything to say about his La Liga career, but he seems to be solid when he puts on the country shirt, as, as, if, as is Yusuf Poulsen. Um, Poulsen's good, yeah. Dolberg seems to be a solid player. Dolberg, yeah. Uh, you know, and then they can bring on other players as well. They've got Stryger Larsson and those sorts of players. Uh, you know, they've got Vestergaard in there as well. Norgard. Yeah. They seem to have players yeah. that, even if we they're haven't heard players, of them as big, yeah. yeah, they're solid. They would be a solid Premier League country. team. And yeah. they are, they have whatever, you know, they call, I don't know how you compare it. You know how they have the chemistry on FIFA. Yeah. It's like they've maxed that out. They they yeah. play, they are better than the sum of their parts when they put on the jersey. Sure. Whereas I would say that England historically have been way worse than the sum of their parts. Mm-hmm when we've had quality undeniably over the years and um, that is I would say why we get taken apart because people that have the team spirit they have the chemistry they have the the oneness and they beat us and I definitely Denmark have the oneness I think we seem to have the oneness at the moment yeah yeah and we have the quality but it's sure. not a done deal we also need to take into account that it's a home game it's a yeah. Wembley where it all yeah, started that's big, that's big. I've just texted my cousin who was at the Germany game saying, how did yeah. you get these tickets, mate? He said, we got them randomly. My mate, my mate checked the app like three minutes after they came out. After the podcast, I left a message him out saying, what app is it? Because I need to get on there. <laughs> I don't yeah, care how right. much it costs, bro. I really don't give yeah, a shit. I mean, the semi-final was like, I, I won't pay like all the money in the world. But for the final, if we get to it, I'm paying all the money in the world. Nah, bro, if, you get, if you get a final ticket, I'll, I'll pay for one too. <laughs> You're on holiday, aren't you? Yeah, no, but I'll come down from where the fuck I'm going. Bro, I'll, I'll <laughs> It's an English holiday, so it's fine. Um, okay, I'll just go, bro. We'll we'll see, we'll see. No, um, honestly, mate, to go to a, a Euros final that'd and be bad, bro. Never again, it will never again. be at Wembley yeah. again, mate. Nah, it will it never be at Wembley. This it will won't. count I as. I mean, like... we're thinking too far ahead as well. Like we got to get through Denmark. No, but you're one right. Thing you're I'm right. Gonna, one thing I want to say about Denmark, and you've alluded to it like quite a lot yourself, but um, their style of play is really good, and even I watched them against Belgium and for the first half against Belgium they fucking dominated Belgium and, I, and that's not an understatement they could have been 3 or 4-0 up against Belgium Belgium weathered the storm and came back and won in the second half that's a different story but one thing I've noticed and even in the, like you were saying in the Czech game today is that Belgium Belgium Denmark seem to have a strong first half they so switch off though they switch we off need, yeah so we need we need to be careful in the first half because they 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 can they can really play they can really play I don't think they've got absolute outstanding individual quality they've got a couple of players that w- can be game winners on their day but as a whole they're well drilled they they know their job and like you said their chemistry is fucking insane so we've got to be we've got to be careful like if if you know we've got the we've got the advantage at Wembley you know we're we're coming off the high of the four 0 but sometimes the worst thing is is when your team is winning and it's going fucking especially amazing. a team that you're a yeah. bit better than that's the worst kind yeah. of thing like if you're against a team that's uh no offense to ukraine fairly clearly worse than you overall yeah, even if you are a tad complacent you've still got the quality usually mm-hmm. to see it through um and if you're playing a team like Belgium, you're always going to give it your all because I, I I personally find it easy to go fuck them. They don't think we can do it. We can take them on. Like you know, like I feel like that's the mindset. You can be like, they don't want us to win all this stuff. They're better than us. We'll give it to them. But they've got it all to lose. We've yeah. got it all to gain. But in a case like this, where you're a favourite, look, Denmark are currently as we stand nine to one to win the Euros. Yeah, and we are. Near that, yeah, we Before. are six to four. We are 1.5 to 1 as it stands. Yeah. So we but are considered six times more likely to win than them. It's also it's also got to be said, like, let's take Switzerland, for example. So they knocked France out. No one in the fucking world expected that. They took Spain all the way to penalties. Yeah. With, and then 30 or 40 minutes of that game, they had 10 men. So, like, I would put Denmark in the kind of bracket that Switzerland I would are. say that Denmark are a little bit Maybe better than higher, yeah. Switzerland. I mean, on, pe- on pedigree, because they've won the Euros before and all that sort of stuff. So... I mean, but you're right. It's, it's exactly it's, that kind of yeah. match. If Switzerland can do it, then, and the the thing is as well with, with England as well is like we've got we've got a lot of baggage that comes with England, and especially like as fans, and 
we although like everyone you know jokes and say you know it's coming home a lot of us do genuinely believe that we we can definitely win this this is our best chance in a while but if you're talking like historically and on pedigree like Denmark could definitely beat us and like they also it beat us it at Wembley me. It in the qualifiers yeah exactly so it, it wouldn't massively surprise me if we lost but I don't want to think about that. No, in, I would be gutted. I would, be, win. I would yeah. be absolutely distraught if we lost this one in the yeah. same way that I was. I'd be even more distraught than the World yeah. Cup mm-hmm. because I, I hate to say it, but I think all of our expectations have risen since the World Cup. Oh, the sure. beauty yeah. of the World Cup was it was like the first time ever that we really didn't have outrageous English arrogant expectations because we used to come into these old ones, even in 2010, yeah. 2014, think we can win this one, we can have it, even though we yeah, were in no I position to win it. I don't quite it. know, though, to be fair. I, I feel like the the expectation hasn't really changed. I think mo- what normally will happen is if, if we have a really good group stage and then we get through the round of 16 or whatever, then people will start to believe and then we get our hopes crushed. I think a lot of the time... England fans don't go into a competition and think we can win it. Like I don't know many English fans where when Euro twenty twenty came around, they were like, Oh yeah, we've got a really good squad, but we won't win it. Like that that's what most most people's opinion was. Like, because judging from a manager like South Southgate, he hasn't got a great pedigree, he hasn't got a great C V. You you looked at all these teams and there was a good five or six teams on paper you'd say probably would beat us just not even just because of players but just because of who they are as nations and their pedigree and like it, it's good to show that we're, we're building our own kind of history at this point in time no one's looking at england and thinking oh they're just fucking wannabes sort of things like we've knocked out germany that hasn't happened since 66 when we won the world cup like we we're kind of creating a that we're not bottlers do you know what i mean like yeah it's almost like we're changing our reputation yeah it's almost like tottenham have become you know we're, we're we're almost become tottenham and like tottenham are actually doing well and actually look like they're going can to I, stuff can and, i can i say mean? that um the difference i think between this euros and the world cup in 2018 was that um southgate wasn't uh, as much as you know a lot of people don't rate southgate southgate wasn't just not rated back in 2018 yeah. he was just unheard of no one really knew what he was about anyone everyone just thought he was a placeholder yes man at the fa whatever whatever some people still have uh, that opinion that's fine that's up to them but it was even more that before and we had no expectations to be a young team it was considered the worst english team in decades and so and we got the easy run through but getting to the semi-final was so far above our expectations that it was Uh, euphoric whereas now no listen 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 like now Southgate was popular coming into this. He had a better squad. Players like Foden had come through. Grealish had made their claims for places. Mm. Kane had hit another level in the season preceding. Um, the young players had had a couple more years to get better, like Sterling, like Sancho, et al. And, you know, this is when... I, and I said from the beginning, we really can win this. I said from the beginning, yeah. we can win this. Um, so no, I no one... And I think a lot of people that I speak to did. I don't really hear what you were saying about, no, no, oh, we've no, got no, a good no, squad, no, but no, we no. won't win. I think a no, lot no, of people no, no. were quite confident in our no, chances. Well, no, what I actually said was, I, I said that we have a really good squad, but, you know, I didn't say we've got, like, no chance of winning, but I said there was five or six other teams that people would probably say would beat us to it but do you know what i mean like in tournaments things can happen things are crazy See, i had us a second or third sort of favorites man i really rate us i think we can do it i really do but that's not to get ahead of ourselves every game is a, a war yeah. zone every game is a battle and i also think like and we've we've alluded to it before maybe apart from france like we've got the best squad of 26 at this euros it's in terms of yeah we in, do individual depth and quality and i also want to allow, allude to the fact that like southgate is he's appeared to be a, a decent manager here, but I do feel like it's the players more than it's his, his man, managerial Let's brilliance. I think that he, you know, he's he's definitely made team selection mistakes. Whether you know whether you believe that or not, I still think that even if you're winning games or drawing games like the Scotland game, that you can. It doesn't mean you're a perfect manager. You can still make changes that are better. You can still always improve. Um, but I do think that. Yeah, he he could have. Uh, I, Greedish not starting one game at this Euros is fucking baffling. Like, don't get me wrong. So Kane, I do want to say that um, Greedish at times has been training separately from the squad because of concerns about his fitness and condition. Yeah, but even some of the games he didn't even come off the bench. Like, yeah, that's but not, he's not he's not one hundred percent fully fit, which uh, yeah, will factor well, into the situation. Maybe that's some media shit they're trying to spin, but I don't know, man. No, he's been doing independent training to like. Um, 
like you know make sure his condition he's is still right. still got to give him some time that like do you know what I mean that he should have played the last 30 minutes tonight like I know that we're 3 or 4 no up but like give him a game like get get him get him on the ball get him to like cuz if you're worried about his fitness and stuff like that give him half an hour or do you know what I mean Southgate in the back of his head was probably thinking if I send him out for half an hour he gets injured fucking brilliant I don't have to have any more questions about him starting and shit like that he probably loved that cuz he fucking hates Grealish at least it seems that he does so you know, I'm 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 excited, man. I hope I'm just I until we get to the final. Because w- one thing I want to say as well is that we, in as far as this tournament goes, we haven't surprised anyone in terms of we've not really beaten anyone that people thinks we that we couldn't have beaten. Well, Germany. Me? I mean, but you, you'd still say on on recent form and how they're going through World Cup qualifiers, losing games. I think they lost to Spain six nil in the last year. Do you know what I mean? That they're not. They're nowhere near like what they were. Like no, but I think a lot of people thought that we would not win that game. Yeah, and I, I you said, included, I, I myself said that Germany were were slight favourites. I never said Germany would absolutely spank us or anything like that. I just said Germany were slight favourites that game, and I said like fifty two times out of hundred we would probably get beaten by Germany or, or something similar to that. Six times out of ten maybe, and this time it wasn't. But I would say, and it's similar to the World Cup, we have had an easy run to the to get to where we are. We haven't beaten that many good teams to get there. Um, so what I would say to counter this is, um, if you just don't, if you take the flag and the reputation away, yeah, we've beaten teams. Uh, assuming we beat Denmark, our run to the final involves beating the world 10, 11 and 13 team. Yeah, that's not that impressive. I'll be honest. Well, some of those top 10 There's no top aren't in Europe. In there. There's no top and fives in there. Some of those top ten teams aren't in Europe, and we are number four, so we take yeah. up another one of those. There isn't who, who, that many. Out of curiosity, who are the other teams? So France, will, France would be number two or three. I take it. Yeah, Belgium. Belgium be uh, I believe. Let me just check. I'm kind of Belgium, Portugal. I imagine Portugal will be quite high because they won the Euros and the Nations League. So, just give me a moment, mate. So Belgium number one, yeah, France two, Brazil yeah. three. So we can't count them. Yeah. England four, Portugal five, Spain six, yeah. Italy seven, Argentina eight, Uruguay yeah. nine. Denmark 10. I got it wrong, sorry. Instead of the 10th, 11th and 13th, we beat the 10th, yeah. 12th and 14th. Denmark a 10th, so, Germany a 12th and Croatia a 14th. So this is what I mean. If 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 Southgate can beat... If we get through Denmark, obviously, I don't want to dismiss Denmark because they could smash us, but or not smash us, but beat us. If he, if he can beat Spain or Italy, then he'll have my... Like, I, I support England and I support Southgate, but like I will be... I will like I will hold my hands up and I'll be like fair fucking play if we can beat Spain or Italy. It will be mainly the players because I don't think Southgate's an amazing manager or anything like that. But it will it will be an achievement if we can beat a Spain or an Italy. Until we do that, I'm still I'm still like just because of p- times gone by, I'm still just I just really want us to do it and I'm just worried that we won't. Yeah. You know. So I, like because the thing is as well like you can say we got to the semi final of the World Cup and say we get to the final of the Euros and we lose it and it's like. It's great, but I don't want to celebrate not winning something. Like I mean, yeah. I, I I I have fond memories of getting foreign tournaments, and we and like they always go on about Euro '96 and all this sort of shit. But we need to remember that we lost that semi final. We didn't fucking win Euro '96. We didn't even get to the final in Euro '96. If you know, if we lose to Denmark, like that's not a successful tournament to me. That's that's a fucking. It's bad almost tournament. worse than going out bad because we had it out to win, and we really yeah. had the like the 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 run in to win. And in my opinion, if Southgate doesn't at least get to the final, he needs to be sacked. 100%. That's never going to happen though, because we no, beat I mean, Germany in the last sixteen. We should, he, should, he shouldn't be. He shouldn't be England. Manager. We beat Germany that people didn't expect us to win. That's a big win. I know, but win. that's, that's a it's a poor win. Germany. Spain beat them six 0 and Spain aren't even that good. Like the, Germany, if if you check Germany's international form over the last year or two, they've been fucking awful. And at the last World Cup, they went they went out in the group stage, I think, or or they went out. Round sixteen, I can't remember. They went out fucking early. Yeah. So they're, they're I think not, it was they're the group stage. Near, right. They're nowhere near what they were. They lost like, to Korea. I remember. Yeah. They're nowhere near what they were. Like so, I mean, look, don't get me wrong. Germany have got some decent players, but like as a team and a collective, and the manager kind of gone a bit stagnant and stuff like that. That they're they're not a top top side at the moment. They're they're a top good side, but they're not a top top side. Like you'd probably consider England at the moment, or Italy at the moment, or France at the moment. They're not quite in that I level. I think they've we got need... players that are just as good as ours. They are just as we accuse Southgate of not managed well. 
No, I'd say we've got. Do you know what I mean? Our, our, our Neuer, is, Gnabry, Werner. Yeah, but we've got about fifteen of players on that level. They've yeah, I five. could name that. No, come on, mate. Come on, come on, come on. Goretzka, Kimmich, bangers. Yeah. You, so you've said about five or six. Gozens, players. Hummels. Brother, you don't even know who Dozens was before this tournament. No, but he's a banger in this tournament. Yeah, exactly, so he Atalanta. No, you can't just see have someone play for three or four games and be like, oh, they're He's been like their best class, player. He, yeah, he was and Atalanta cool. are a consistent Champions League team now. Yeah, I are big boys, man. I love them. Yeah. They're good to watch as well. They're actually fun to watch as well. They did get beaten like 5 0 by Liverpool, though, a few seasons ago or recently. But I think but if anyway. you looked at Germany's squad on paper and you looked at ours, you'd go, "This is a, these are two top quality teams. I yeah, can't beat these apart. So to no, go like, oh, no, he no, needs no, to be no, sacked no, no, if he doesn't beat the team bullshit, after man. beating them is a that's bit tough. That's fucking bullshit. No, that's bullshit, bro. If we lose to Denmark and we go in the same final, he needs to be sacked. Or he needs to be said, if you don't get to the final in the World Cup, you need to be sacked. Okay, so um, I came into this tournament thinking pretty similarly to you that we've got an unbelievable attacking lineup and yeah. they're not being used in a way that complements their style and the defensive style doesn't really work for us because we don't have a solid defense that we do have a solid attack and the game should be to go 4-3-3 and smack them at least go to murder and go balls to the wall and go for the murder yeah. and we don't know what would have happened if we'd done that because there aren't you know hypotheticals that we can live out and see in yeah. actuality but we've played a defensive game and in life you have to be you can have a strong opinion but you in the face of like counter evidence that mean that you could be wrong it takes like a good self-aware person to be able to hold their hands and go okay i it appears that i am wrong i will look at this objectively and try and see what the what yeah. the truth is and it seems that i'm wrong and this defensive style of play is working it's got us past yeah. Germany that many people did not have faith and cured us of this curse that's hung over our heads. Many people, including me, thought that Sterling's form was poor at the end of the season and that other players who were in form should have started, yeah. a la Grealish and others. Mm -hmm. Sterling has had a phenomenal tournament, got that another assist today. But... He's been the difference maker in a lot of the actual things that have happened. He's been the difference maker. He hasn't been phenomenal. He's been the difference maker. He's got he's he's had he's had he's had very, very good contributions and games. His overall play has been shit. Let me finish, let me finish. A lot of players that weren't rated, um a lo uh, the double pivot DMs yeah. of Rice and Rice and Phillips was not a popular thing coming into this tournament. No, I don't believe that. They've both played really well. Yeah they have. Um a lot of people thought that it would just be Mount Grealish Foden and yeah. they've not had as much game time as a lot of people expected them to get and they, when they played they played well yes we as a collective have got through all of this without all of these players that were apparently mm -hmm. keen, key in a more defensive style we haven't conceded a goal we're in the semi-finals yeah. with a great chance of getting to the finals we're favourites to win the tournament we have to at this point go and I have to go and say I have to accept that Southgate has, has got it all right so far. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily agree with all them points there. I think, I, from myself, I mean, you know, you've said you're in peace. Like from myself, I, there's definitely things I've got wrong myself. I also think there's you can't be a hundred percent wrong with certain things if you don't know what the other response is. So, for example, I've always been a big admirer of Jack Grealish when he's played in his limited time. I think he's already already got two or three assists or at least been heavily involved in at least three goals from what I can remember. And he's only been on the pitch in a total of like fucking 90 minutes or something, you know, or maybe slightly more than that. So I think it's it's worth noting that he has he has done very well. Um, I do agree that I, I did want more attack in football. I, I still don't think that's necessarily a wrong thing because you don't know that we could we might have even performed even better if we'd gone more attacking, you know? But that, there's also, you know, you don't know it could have gone a lot worse. So I don't think you can 100% say you were wrong. I can just I just think in hindsight you can say that Southgate's done I think you very can well say at this tournament. He's done he's made mistakes. What needs done, to be done and he's made yeah, the right calls yeah. every time. I wouldn't say he's you can't always say a calls right if you don't know what the alternative is. I yeah, I don't think he's made any decisions that have cost us or affected us but you can't be like he's 100 right you're 100 wrong because you don't know what the alternative is i would say is. if we get through the round it was the right call because you don't have yeah. enough counter evidence to go otherwise for sure but what i'm trying to say is like things could definitely have been improved like you've got, 
even the Scotland game, for example, like we should have lost the Scotland game. Like anyone that says we shouldn't have is a moron. Like, sorry, but they are. We should have lost the Scotland game, right? And we very easily could have. But that that's not that's not to say that Southgate's fucking shit and I want him out or anything like that. But what I'm trying to say is things you know, things happen in these sort of games. He made mistakes in the Scotland games, right? From then he's been he hasn't really put a foot wrong. He's done a few weird team selections and stuff like that. But you d- you don't know what the alternative is. Like you don't know that if he had played Foden, Grealish, I said that, Saka, I said that. Moore, that he we might have fucking beat Germany four 0 Like do, do you know what I mean? That like, you you don't know what the alternative is. So you can say from what he's doing and the results he's got, he's done very well. But you can't say that anyone's right or wrong. There's things I held my hand up. I was I was trashing Sterling a little bit because his overall play is terrible. But he gets goal contributions and he got a very good assist tonight. But you know, as as a footballer, he's not great. That that there's you know he loses the ball on average about twenty times to fifty times in a game, but he still contributed massively. So you know you can be proved wrong, and you can it's blurred given lines given the game that Sancho had today as well. As bigger fans of Grealish as we are, could can you really say that having seen both of their performances, that Grealish should have started? Yeah, Grealish should have started hundred percent against which one of them? Well, I mean. Sterling's not going to be benched at this point, no matter what. He's scored three goals. He's been our most important player in terms of contributions. Like, Let's not get twisted. Um, however, Sancho... Had a great game. Had some nice footwork. Didn't really do that much in the game, though. Like, I mean, he, he didn't create hardly anything. He'd done a few good dribbles, but... It wasn't exactly spectacular. Like when Grealish has been on the pitch, he's been setting up goals. He's been creating chances. Sancho, to my knowledge, maybe he set, he made it create a chance once. In it in was all whole... of his movement and runs and everything but, as well. But he though. didn't like, it, like, like you could, what you he did that... wasn't like quantifiable yeah. in goals and assists. But you can say the same thing with Saka. Like Saka had yeah, and he was considered a great a good player game, at the Euros. game and a half. But but it's because Saka was the only, one of the only players to actually want to attack in that game in the, against Czech Republic. But, and we'd been used to seeing a lot of defensive shit in the first two games, so that it was kind of like a breath, breath of fresh air at that point. Like, Sa- Sancho had a decent game, but, like, nothing that... you did, I didn't look at Sancho today and think, oh, that's a £75 million, pa- million pound player that Man United are buying, you know? Well, I honestly think that's a bargain. Like, I mean, we'll, that is we'll a see how it goes, because, you know, Man United his- historically with, like, in their recent history, I mean, like in the last five or ten years, a lot of their expensive signings haven't really worked out. So we'll have to see how that goes. I hope he does because he's he's a bright young boy. He's he's been amazing in the Bundesliga for Dortmund. I'm I'm you know as much as it pains me to say because he plays for Man United, but I'm looking forward to seeing him play. Yeah. Um, so no, we'll see look how at goes. his goals and assists, and then you think yeah. seventy five million. You think fucking hell, that is a bargain. Yeah, I don't get why anyone was negotiating him, talking about they weren't stumping up the gas. Just put the fucking money up at that point for a young twenty one year old who's got them kind of stats. Yeah, no, he was outscoring Messi at the same age, and with the goals and assists. Mm, no, no, it's 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 incredible. It is the Bundesliga, so it's not quite a top top league. No, but, I don't buy that. I don't buy that. I mean, it depends which way you look at it because. Lewandowski doesn't score over 30 goals in the Premier League, but he does easily in the Bundesliga because he's they're better than most teams and not, they haven't got much competition. Like outside of the top six teams in the Bundesliga, they're they're not very good. No, I don't buy that either. I mean, most of most if you put Premier League versus Bundesliga, like most Premier League teams would beat most Bundesligas in their positions. Um, like if you if you went first against first, Prem against Bundesliga. And then if you went second against second, you went third against third, you'd probably have about 15 wins from the Premier League, maybe more, against their equal. I'm like not where convinced that the golf is as big as you think it is. What well, it is? I'm not convinced. Okay, so what good teams are there in the Bundesliga apart from Dortmund and Bayern Munich? Just from all the reading I'll I've done and okay. the, like the, the stats and like scouting stuff that I'd like keep like moderately up to date on, like one of the biggest feeding grounds for like undervalued players is top of like the second Bundesliga and bottom of the first that can be great. Like Pascal Gross at Brighton was two million pounds. Now you know considered way better than that. Like playing his football, not outstanding in the bottom and lower like first and second Bundesliga type yeah. levels, and those have gone on to be like established Premier League players. Yeah, but hmm. I don't get your point, but. 
Like that's the quality of that, and that is like seen. I, d- as I just, I just uh, don't think Bundesliga are any are close to uh, to Premier League in terms of competitiveness. Look, I'm not trying to take anything away from Sancho. I'm saying he's he's quality. He wouldn't have them sat. He would not have them stats if he's in the Premier League. We will see, man. I mean, We've he, got to see. Might, what, it's on him wrong. now. He's got the expectations now. But the thing is, if he was playing Man United, I, he's not going to get crazy stats for Man United. If he was playing for a Man City that absolutely dominate, like he'd get a lot more. But like. He, he'll, I think he'll get decent stats for Man United, but they won't be outrageous like they have been in the Bundesliga. Right, should you move on from England stuff? Go on, let's go, let's go. We've waffled way too much. So, we got three. I've got three main things to talk about. I think um, two of them are not really that much. They're, they're new updates on existing stories, so it's not like we've got it all yeah. to bring. So let's start with the only new piece, which is Locatelli, who plays with Sassuolo, who are not considered one of the old, you know, top, top, top clubs, in, or even one of the new top clubs. Not, they're not like an Atalanta or whatever that are killing it. But he's been banging at the Euros. He's been banging a minute at the Euros. He's got two in the group stage game against, was it Turkey or Switzerland? Oh, I think it was Turkey. He scored two. Yeah, potentially, I think. Um, since midfielder, um, he was, and I believe he wants to. His preference is Juventus. Juventus have got no cash, so <laughs> skin, bro. so the director or, or is it the director of football or the CEO? Someone who's connected to Sassuolo did a, uh, did an interview saying, "Yeah, so we know Juventus want him. They got no cash. He obviously wants to go there. Italian team to seem to be fairly stubborn, and they, they prefer yeah. to stay domestic in the same way that I guess Brits do." Um, it's, and, it's based mostly it's, you know I mean? like in Germany it's Bayern Munich all the good players go to Bayern Munich in Germany Like it, I would say that Italians and English are less mobile than the others anyways yeah. anyways, he seems to prefer Juventus he wants to get swallowed up into the infinite pool of Juventus midfielders that seem to disappear after they join Juventus um, And but he said you know there's difficulties with that because they're broke the yeah. only other team that have sit- submitted a concrete bid are therefore ahead in the negotiations are Arsenal he named them by name Yep. It would allegedly be a forty million euro deal. Jeez. That would be the midfielder, I guess, that we were targeting. That was like the secret yep. one, but the cat's been let out of the bag by literally <laughs> the fucking guy handling the checks at Sassuolo. Yeah. So he said that. Um, this isn't like you know journalist shit. This is just him saying this straight up. Mm-hmm. So you know, yep. like call it bullshit at your own expense. So that would be a great deal in my eyes. Absolutely great deal. Yeah, no, me too. I, I, I've said to you a, f- a few times. We need to fucking get a lot more numbers in midfield it from what i've seen like i'll be honest I've, I've watched probably three out of the five italian games um he seemed quite solid was was he the one last night where he looked like he was about to be injured or was it pulled up or something no that's um or was that another not one Bellotti, um immobile uh, no 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 that was the one that like uh, no, there was definitely i i thought it was um, um was it Bellotti? I, I thought i thought it might be i might i might be wrong but what, whatever. No, it was one of the strikers. He was either Balassi or Immobile. I know, I know Immobile. Well, he was called. I know that he faked. The, you know the goal thing when the goal. Yeah, went is that not what you're talking about? No, 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 no. He, there was one. I, I'm sure it's oh. the player that you've been talking about where he pulled up or something like that. I don't know. I thought you were talking about the fake injury. Oh no, 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 not, not that one. I'm sure. Okay. Um, I thought it was. Um, what's the midfielder's name again? It's gone blank. Locatelli. Locatelli. I thought it was Locatelli that pulled up, but it's obviously not. Um, I thought he pulled up like hamstring thing towards the end of the game, but I might be wrong. No, that was Spilitzola. There we go. Sorry, some some of the, some of the Italian names are so like cool and fucking long and shit that I, I just, I'm I glad he's remember. out in case we have to face him in the final because he was playing yeah. fucking good, bombing but, yeah, down the so, left side, man. I know I've, I've waffled and haven't really got to my point at all in the, like the last minute. Go on. But yeah, he he looks a decent player. We definitely need numbers in midfield. Um, he's looked very impressive so far. But we'll see. Like th- this is the thing. Like when players, it's a bit annoying because when players have good Euros, their price goes up massively. But the, you could say the same thing about Xhaka as well. We need to sell Xhaka. Hopefully, his performances at this Euros have added another five or ten million on. <laughs> and maybe a team like Juventus or whatever want to come in for him. But like, but then at the same time, it's going to cost us an extra five, ten million with this. I don't think it's. I think the price is just forty. Yeah, but is he? I don't know if he's worth forty at this point. It's a bit, like if we can get twenty five, thirty for Xhaka instead of the fifteen they were trying to offer us. Offer us. Up, it won't be that much then, more. Honestly. Do you know what I mean? So we need to. We we need central midfielders. He looks quality. I'm not sure about his age. How old he is? To be fair, I think he's so, not old. I think he's like twenty five, twenty four. Okay, so we we just need, we need we need we need this guy. Bring him in. We need we need we need numbers. Like, Fuck we off, spoke about fucking. 
We spoke about Neves. We spoke about fucking Basuma. We just seem to be so slow. No, but no, but I would say that Locatelli, yeah, do, the though. deal that that is being slow is because this guy's the priority, but he needs to make up his no, fucking no, mind. No, 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 but, but this is what I'm trying to say. Like, even with Buendia, for example, right? So we put a bid in for Buendia, right? But there, there, there was there was no fucking secret that back in January or the summer before we wanted Buendia. Like, if this was a team like Man City, they would have got... They would basically, probably in January... And would have said in January, right, we're signing him in the summer. And they probably would agree to fee for the summer. Like, six months before it even fucking happened. That's the way that these big clubs, like Chelsea, offer. you've seen with Chelsea, like, multiple times. Like, yeah, I think it happened with Werner. Where they, they announced in, like, January that they were signing Werner at the end of the season and stuff like that. Like, big teams operate quickly. Like, Sancho, Man United have already come and said, we're going to sign him at the end of the Euros. Like, they operate quickly. Arsenal are so fucking slow. And it winds me up. It fucking In all fairness, Chelsea off. are very good at that. They did that to both Pulisic but, and yeah, they did that for Zayic in the middle of like terrible. March we're, as well. We've got to be the worst negotiators in the fucking world. Like, we just don't... like. It's very fucking simple negotiations. You either give a club what they want or you don't. It's that, sim- it's that fucking simple. Like, you either pay a play- player the wages he wants or you don't. Like... I don't get these fucking negotiate like how people are in this high profile positions and this much money is involved and they can't negotiate themselves out of a wet paper bag. It's fucking embarrassing. You've you like with the Buendia, like I don't know, Aston Villa signed for like thirty five million or whatever, right? You bid to Norwich, thirty million, rejected. We want thirty five. You don't fucking go around, oh, I'll give you thirty one and a half and then Aston Villa come in and fucking gazump you. What one or two million doesn't mean fuck all when it comes to a player of that quality, do you know what I mean? And the potential that that player's got, like, it, it just, we're fucking cheap and, like, we're one of the richest clubs in the world but we, we, we just, oh, it winds me up. So, it fucking winds me up. here's a more light-hearted one for you. Go on. I don't know the guy's name. I saw this briefly last night. There was an ex-Love Island contestant. <laughs> um, he was pictured with, guess who? I don't know, mate. James Madison, and <laughs> guess what the story said on it? I, do, I, I did see something about this. What is, there was something that happened on social media, right? And, like, someone put uh, something up about James Madison and Arsenal. Yeah. And then, ja- <laughs> and then James, James Madison followed the guy that put the post yeah. up or something, right? I yeah. saw something like that. So yeah. he's basically, he met him up. James Madison's wearing a cute little bandana to hide his receding hairline. He's wearing these dangly earrings and all this stuff. Dang. He looks like he should be on Love Island himself, to, fair, to be you, honest. You wear dangly earrings. I rock the dangly earrings. But, yeah, but I don't do it in a bait <laughs> Love Island way. I, I rock nah, it, do, I rock it on gang, bro. I rock it on fire. Gang, bro. You're not gang. You're some, like, white push boy from London, bro. What are you I rock them good, though. I don't rock them like with, the, with their style. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Um, so he's rocking all that yes. outfit, looking like he's auditioning for Love Island, and yeah. the guy's tagged, like, tweet, not not tweet, whatever it is, I don't know, whatever the he kids are using these he's, days. He's tagged, he's tagged him in the post, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> And he goes, Maddis is joining Arsenal. Jeez. And so we're like, okay, we'll take that. Okay. Inject okay. it. Let's go. Yeah. Um, so if we miss out on Bundia, but we get Madison, I don't think anyone's going to be mad about that. It's not going to happen, though, but yeah. Next one is allegedly, Everson have moved in front of us for Ben White. Yeah, that doesn't fucking surprise me, mate. Look what happened with Buendia. It's fucking PTSD again. It's Arsenal again. Like, it's so sim- that, bruv, It's so simple to just be like, right, Brian want 50 million, right? And we've bidded 40. If we bid 45, like, you know, there's a 10 million gap. So say we want 50. 45, no, we want 50. You either go, yeah, we'll pay it, or no, and cut it dead. Like, it's that simple. Like, I, I don't, I, I don't get it. We're so fucking shit at negotiating. Like, I know that there's there's probably other things that, you know, have to be looked into, like, and there's probably a, a bit more legalities behind it. But it, it's not fucking rocket science to negotiate a deal, is it? Let's be honest. In, in terms I, mean, of I would say that it can be, there. which is why people, like, no, are I, master I get negotiators. The, I get when you've got, like, players with, like, sell-on fees for other clubs and, you know, you've got a... And then, you know, he's, but it doesn't seem like it'd be that difficult. It doesn't seem like James Madison's got a sell-on fee with another club, so unless they need more money or something like that. But, I'm, I, you know, I'm talking more about the, the Ben White situation where he, there's no sell-on fee to a former club from what I'm aware of. If we pay them 50 million, we either get him or we don't. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Everton came in and got him because we've already seen him with fucking Buendia against Aston Villa. 
Like, nothing surprises me with Arsenal anymore. And we'll end up going and signing a £13 million player from fucking Anderlecht or something like that. No, no, nothing against We're literally like about we to do quality. that with Lacombe. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> but we, we, don't, we need to stop going for the cheap options. And we need to, like... There's nothing wrong with getting a cheap, good signing. Don't get me wrong. But we're so heavily reliant on doing it. Like the the deals like Thomas Partey for forty five million. Like he hasn't been an absolute brilliant success, but you can see the quality there. You know, you know you've got a player. Like the deals, like Tierney just going out and doing it. Like we don't need all this negotiations. Other clubs come in for them. Can I the, can I call on. you out real quick? Go on. Last week we were saying we didn't want to do this deal, and now because it could be taken away from us, we're all grasping for it. Like if you take the the toy that no, the baby's no, 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 not no, no, using no. away from it, it suddenly wants it. No, a lot. no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not I'm not alluding to the fact that I massively want Ben White. But what I'm trying to say is because, in my opinion, I'd I'd much rather Saliba came into the fray and played because I don't feel like we need to prioritise centre back. And this is not me saying I want Ben White. This that was more like a, I'm speaking from. I want you us. don't like being made to feel like a little cut because the other clubs come and steal our shit. Yeah. I mean, it, come fuck our wives and all this fucking, shit. <laughs> mate, not, I've spoke about it before, but like the fucking like how Aston Villa like took Buendia and then just thought, nah, we're gonna mug him off by bidding for Smith <laughs> <Right, bro. laughs> like, <laughs> twice. Aston Villa like, and this is the mentality, right? Aston Villa think they're bigger than us, right? And by Aston Villa doing that, other fans think that that Aston Villa are bigger than Arsenal. It's, a, it's, it's no, it's it's, man. it's it's psychological. It's the, it, no, that's the ultimate winner's mentality. If you can back it, like it is, yeah. like if you're, it's most murderer's mentality. Like for real, like they come to murder. And I, like, if I wasn't an Arsenal fan, I'd respect it, but I hate them for him. Yeah, uh, but and, can I also know, we, can I also say, say oh, with oh, the Ben White stuff, you know that meme where it's like, "Our oh, mum, can we buy whatever?" And they're like, "Mum's like, oh, we've got." that at home, at home yeah. and then that is like a shit version yeah, yeah i feel yeah. like it's like not quite that but when you say like oh can we get ben white so we've got saliba at home so, yeah we do have saliba at home but like what's the what is this nonsense about we've said it before we've we touched on it like in actual like economic yeah. detail we're buying a player for 50 million that might only be five or ten million better than holding and it seems yeah. to be like a dumb spending yeah. of a lot of money when we like money if well, if we've got 400 million then fuck it drop it everywhere bro like this guy is like a good player but like is this really what we need to fortify and it seems like a bit of a crazy crazy thing to do so even if other people are paying that like that probably you know that that makes me feel a bit better in that other people value him that highly but at the same time unless it's random cash like still i don't i'm not super into it but this is what i'm saying as well like and i've spoke about this before but i'll bring it up again because it's relevant but like we don't need to spend fifty million on a fucking centre. <laughs> like, if it's a central midfield, central midfielder, like we need that. Like, yeah. we Drop need fifty million on Locatelli million. if it happens. Yeah. That's world class. Like, Madison, like you know, like I, we don't necessarily massively need a, like a, a starter ten because we've got Smith Rowe, but, but we want competition for places. But I'm saying like we don't need a seventy million bid on Madison. But like we can get another. You can get another 10 that's going to be back up for some row. that will still be competitive, but we need to prioritise fucking positions. Like We need a new right back and we need centre midfields way before. We need two centre midfielders and we need a new right back, right? Way I presume before. we'll only do right back once a right back leaves, though. Yeah, but we need that way. Yeah, but you still need to be looking, though. You don't want to be like last day of the well, I'm sure there, we are, like, but we just haven't I'm heard fine. about it yet. Well, Bellerin, I think Bellerin's gone this summer. I'll be honest. Like, I love Bellerin, but I think he's gone, right? So, but we need, it, it just fucks me off though, because you, you have like, the one thing I'll say that maybe I can forgive Arsenal for is the fact that because the Euros are going on, a lot of clubs don't want to be selling players halfway through the Euros and say if a fucking player breaks their leg during the middle of the Euros, it, it fucking kind of mugs you off sort of thing. And that might be part of the reason why Man, Man United have agreed a deal, but they haven't you know, completed the signing because say if Sancho plays against Denmark and breaks his leg and is out for a year, they, they're they not going to fucking want to yeah. finalise the deal. Do you know what I mean? So I can see why. So I can see a lot of, you know, of our signings might just be, we'll wait until after the Euros. But the high likelihood, because if it's Arsenal, we're not, we're just shit at getting players over the line. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And we bid 39.99 for Locatelli but, and they're going, bro, <laughs> give it, us the pound. It just, it, just sh- it just shows you though, but like, look at, Thomas Party, right? That signing, right? We had the whole month to complete that signing, and what did we do it on? The last fucking day. Like, <laughs> I'm still not. Sure. Did we do awesome. that because we didn't get Uar in the end, or like, but like what? But when if you don't get a player, like, how long does it take to get a no? Like, surely it's a pr- yeah. unless the player is that just indecisive. But that in itself is a red yeah. flag. 
Like, yeah, how can it take you this gone, long yeah. to figure out your options aren't options? No idea, mate. No idea. It's 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 fucked, really, isn't it? Like, <laughs> we we need, to, bro. We need to just. We'll reconvene at awesome. the end of the transmission and we'll see how it goes. But right now, I'm a bit confused. Mate, I'm feeling like, positive because it looks like it's raining cash, bro. Then from the figures that people are quoting and the players that were said to be nah, after, we're but. Not at all. I, I, I want to apply for a position um, as Arsenal's negotiator, and I think I'll do a great job. What are you saying? <laughs> Go on. I heard you're looking for a job. Let's see. Let's see. You, you get your football agent's license, and we'll see how you start rocking. I need rocking. to. I need to. I need to, man. That would make this a good podcast if we had a football bro, can you agent. Imagine that fucking inside. Bro. <laughs> inside gossip. Yeah, Grudy should come to Arsenal next week, bro. <laughs> <laughs> deals that off because you the fucking one. snitched it all over the airwaves great we need we need to fucking we, the thing is as well like and I'll, I'll, this is my last point and then we can end the podcast but like with like the whole us spending money on players like I want central midfielders and I want a right back as the, the as the main three signings that I want us to do but if we can if we spend 70, 80, 90, 100 million on a, on a position that we've got filled quite well but it's a massive improvement. So say if it was a player like, you know, a Grealish that came in, and I, you know, we're not going to buy anyone of that quality because we're fucking Arsenal. But that's one of the ones where I wouldn't be like, why the fuck haven't you bought a centre midfielder? Why haven't you bought a right back? Because it's such a star fucking marquee signing that you can understand why they've done it. Yeah. But and they could be worth the money. Like there's something like exactly. a 100 million pound player can do what like okay. So in like programming. There was a study that ended up finding out what is called like the rock star principle. Here we or whatever. go, fucking business chat again. Let's no, go. no, it's in computer science. It's in computer science. <laughs> fucking nerd. And um, they picked nine, I think it was nine programmers, and they um, put them all with like different tasks and shit like that. This is in the 80s. Yeah. And they expected the top level people to perform like twice, maybe three times as good as the worst performer. And it ended up that the top performer was like 25 times as good. Yeah. So, like, being good at something and being great at something are not, like... It's not like if you're a genius, you have a 140 IQ versus the average is 100. So, you like, based on that, you'd assume it was, like, 1.4 times intelligent. It's, like, 25 times. It's really exponential with this shit. And I think the same can be said in football in that, like, you can try and buy 20 million pound players to do the job. But sometimes you've just got to put 70 million up for someone yeah. that could be literally 25 times as good and win you 10 games as opposed to win you one or two it's really yeah. like sometimes it, it could be a bargain to spend twice as much and also like it raises the profile of your club it also makes other top players want to come to your yeah, club true, true. but there's so, there's so many fucking advantages to it like can you think of the amount of when ronaldo signed for juventus can you think of like the amount of yeah, the stock that, price of juventus that, went through the roof and also like I'm not saying like I'm not saying Arsenal are going to get fucking run out of it, but I'm saying like when a player goes to a club like and they're a big player or a really like good player like look at how many players would have not have been looking at Juventus and thinking actually fuck I want to go there now do you know what I mean or if someone saw like Arsenal buy Grealish and think fuck Arsenal actually buy are going to are buying top players at the moment they might actually have some ambition I actually want to go there they might get into the Champions League next season do you know what I mean yeah. like they're looking to do that but. So far as if we're fucking buying Ben White for 50 million and fucking 13 million and elect midfielder, who might turn out to be a brilliant midfielder, don't get me wrong, but he's not like as, as a certainty as someone like a Grealish fucking is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like you just, you run the risk and the more you go cheap, the the less quality you're going to get at your team. It's just, it's just a fact. If you buy, you know, if you buy cheap, cheap shit food, you have a bad diet, you're more like to die young than if you buy organic fucking rich shit, you know? It's, that's just life, man. And I'm waffling about random. I have shit no idea what we're talking about. We about. need to we need to end the fucking podcast right now, bro. Before I start fucking. Come on, let's, let's talk about crazy, your man. philosophy and diet nah, for bro, another I've hour. Already, I've already said it, bro. <laughs> Rich organic players. That's what we want, bro. Rich organic players. You heard it here first. That was North London's most read episode. I don't know what we're covering the England games now. Number five. Number five. Are we gonna do it? So next season is season two, episode one, or is it just episode fifty or forty or whatever? don't know man season two how are we gonna do, do it, it. season series, two bro. coming back for the sequel bro, we'll put, oh. it'll, be on Net, it'll be on netflix one netflix day, original you know I mean? jesus all 149 all right. subscribers go wild for it on netflix Jeez. Let's go. <laughs> all 20 monthly listeners <laughs> uh, right, let's all right thank you very much for listening if you got this far then congratulations you're a legend and we'll be nice back with you when we hopefully beat denmark and get into the final when we go mental exactly Thank you very much. See you later. It's coming home. Woo woo.